Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 351 for Tuesday, the 10th of June, 2014. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. So nice to see you. Hey, tonight we've got a fun show for you. We're going to be showing you some gadgetry on your smartphone, yes. turning that smartphone into an all-in-one tool, perfect for uh, biking or adventuring outdoors. Uh, you know, it is the season. Being MacGyver. Being MacGyver. Well, stick around, we're going to be checking out a, a really neat tool. Uh, also, we've got a ton of viewer questions that you've sent in to us, so Krista's going to be fielding those. Feel free to get into our chat room as well, Category 5 on Freenode, and send them in. And uh, we have got some time dedicated to you tonight with all those great questions that you've been sending in. Absolutely. And we also have some exciting stories coming up in the newsroom today. Dell will be offering Ubuntu 14.04 on its new 2-in-1 uh, hybrid notebooks. Google has released some code to allow email encryption with a Chrome browser plugin. A 16 million color pen can match its ink. I totally read that wrong. A 60 million color pen can match its ink to the shade of any real world object. A Japanese firm is releasing what they call a robot with a heart. Aw, stick around these toys up for Christmas. <laughs> it's a game. It's one of those days. The stories are coming out later in the show. In English, we hope. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Krista Wells. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Introducing Belltone First, a revolutionary new hearing aid. So small you can hardly see it. So comfortable you can hardly feel it. For the first time ever, you can control hearing aids directly from your iPhone. Pick up the phone, listen to music, and use your hearing aids like wireless headphones. Hear everything that matters. Try Belltone First. For a free trial, call 1-800-BELLTONE now. This is Category 5 Technology TV. So nice to see you tonight. It is episode number 351. And uh, so if you want to check out the show notes, go over to category5.tv and you'll see episode number 351 there. All the links that we mention here on the mm -hmm. show, everything will be available to you there. Right on. And Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. That's cat5.tv slash TPN and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. And that's cat5.tv slash IAIB. Krista, we finished Nerdy, the music video. Yes. We did. did you glean any great knowledge from that process? Um, I think I'll be throwing a couple of wardrobe pieces out after seeing it. Oh, that. yeah? Yeah. That's funny that you should say that because <laughs> I was like, I had to get these nerdy outfits for the music video. And as I was shooting, I was like, these are the most stylish outfits that I have. I need more. I'm so going to wear these. You see, I dug back to like my high school clothes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Because oh, I was okay. naturally nerdy back then. Okay. Now you're just too cool for Now school. I just try to cover up the nerd. All right. I, uh, well, Pharrell had this thing hooked on to his belt loop, mm -hmm. and I couldn't figure out what it was. So for the video, I put my keys on my belt loop, and I put a USB flash drive, and I wore it around for three days while we were shooting the music video. <laughs> like all the hipsters are doing. Just like that. And then I realized that this is actually really handy to have a USB flash drive so it's become strapped a habit. to your belt. So I actually, yeah, I, I totally am doing this. This is my thing now. Uh, and I, it's, it's there and it's always handy. So that'll be the next thing. So you just realized that this video brought Biner? out the truth in you. I got, essentially. I, I got new outfits <laughs> so that excited. are very much my style. And I got a carabiner holding a USB flash drive to my to my hip 
at all times. Waterproof one, just in case it ever accidentally goes through the wash. Because that could happen. You accidentally jump in the lake. What did you learn from Nerdy? I thought your scene was cool because you were on a boardwalk. Here oh, there were geese. Yeah, and right here in Barrie. So if you've watched the music video, it's called Nerdy. You'll catch it on our Roku channel under special features, extras. Uh, you can also tune in to episode number 340. What, what episode did we play it on? 349? Jot will tell you in the chat room. Uh, but a recent episode had it as well. Uh, and uh, your scene on the boardwalk here in beautiful Barrie, Ontario. Uh, and we had lots of geese flying around and squawking. And so I decided to leave the sound of That's the geese good. Yeah. in the music video as part of the microphone acting up scene. So had That's a lot cool. of fun. I think it worked well. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a postcard. Yes. Snail Thanks mail. Thanks for sending this in. Yeah. It says, uh, hi, Robbie and everyone at, at category5.tv. Hi. Maybe you should consider doing a mobile show every once in a while. Hmm. Totally. And conduct a virtual live show from geographically diverse areas. Could be fun. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you want to plan a trip to Huntington Beach, California. I'd be happy to assist. Shout out to the to the chat room. All best, uh, Kyoshi Ninja. Nice. Thanks, Kyoshi Ninja. Cool. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to open this to get the chat. Oh, it opens? To get the chat oh, out. <laughs> I actually thought it opened. <laughs> <laughs> Way to ruin the joke. Maybe. I would love, I think it would be a lot of fun to do a little bit of a, like a tour a la, you know, Kyoshi Ninja's suggestion. The real thing is just being able to box everything up. We did the fifth anniversary show. It was mm -hmm. a huge amount of work to box everything up because our studio isn't all that portable. Right. And can it's, you imagine doing that to get on a plane? Oh boy. Yeah. You'd really, really, really need to have some kind of a mobile video rig that is like a laptop a very or, powerful laptop or get your own private jet that has your built-in built -in studio mobile studio oh I love it we'll fly to Perth totally and we'll just pull up to your Reasonable. airport <laughs> and welcome everybody onto the plane and be like yeah. okay welcome to the show well, hey, thanks for sending that in. And you can send a postcard to us. It's P.O. Box 29009, Barrie, Ontario, Canada, L4N7W7. And we love to receive those. Thank you very much. That will go up on the postcard wall. Yeah. A very special day today as my daughter celebrated her and is still celebrating mm -hmm. her ninth birthday. Can you guys believe? Do you want to come in here, sweetheart? Tally Rose. Do you remember the little girl who was on this show a few years ago, who was about here and then here and here. Hey, babe. How are you? <laughs> Shyness kicked in. Happy birthday. Can you see yourself on TV? Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything to say to the world? Um, yeah, speak up into, the, into daddy's face. No. Speak into my microphone. <laughs> Nothing to say to the world? No. You're still carrying Yodi around. That's cool. And uh, so people probably recognize... The, the giraffe. He's a sweet <laughs> <laughs> so. Still in one piece. Yeah. yeah, happy birthday, sweetheart. Happy birthday. She wants to play Planet Calypso. Good kid. Uh, on Linux, you've got a Linux laptop now. Yes. That's cool. What's your favorite game on Linux? Come in here a little bit closer. Um, Augie. Augie. <laughs> Augie game. Augie and the co Cockroaches, which recently came to Netflix, so that's become the big thing. But now, because it's gone, there are no Augie toys available in the Superstore. So if anyone has an Augie toy, this kid is looking seriously for Augie toys. And it happens to be her birthday. And it happens to be her birthday. We didn't even plan that, but let's see what happens. I love you. <laughs> no, it's going to give me one. I know. It's really, really hard to find. Augie toys are like $4,000 on eBay. Because no, they, they made like three of them. Oh, made three of them. They made three of them <laughs> in <laughs> Europe. $15 in free shipping. Well, and then there's oh, yeah? tax. Yes. <laughs> really? Tax. Okay, well, you bookmark that. <laughs> you bookmark that and show Daddy, because that sounds a little too but good I to be true. I forget what it was. As if Daddy didn't do some Googling before Tally's birthday. <laughs> Probably not. Mm -hmm. Well, bud, anything else to say? I put it on my birthday. Yeah, did you have a good birthday? Oh, no. You got some nice chalk for your hair. It looks beautiful. You've grown Very up a cool. lot since you were last on the show. When was the last time? Well, you were on here on your second birthday. 
So you were just a little itty bitty thing. I probably had to no, lift you up. I was that you were tall. here just after you <laughs> were born. I this tall. Yeah, just after you were born, we brought you on the show. Showed you Why? off to everybody. Why not? You live here. So, well, awesome. why didn't you do it with Liam? I did. I brought Liam on the show too. How come you didn't do it with Zach? I did. <laughs> and Zach and Liam even had uh, Zach Tech. Remember that? That was cool. Yeah, but I didn't get to be in it. Well, that's because it was Zach Tech. When are you going to do Tally Talks Tech? Oh no. People at home are waiting. Tally Talks Tech. I think that'd be a when big was show. The last time I did it. Oh, years ago. Years ago. You going to do one? Right now. Okay. Tell me about tech. What do you know about tech? Um, that you can get hacked on tech. Okay, what's better? Windows or Linux? Linux. Don't say it like a question. <laughs> say it with authority. <laughs> Are you brainwashing Linux. <laughs> say it like you know exactly the answer. Linux. Yes, Linux. And why is it better? Um, because, um, I don't know, when it's just better. Perfect answer. Just is. Firefox or Chrome? Or Internet Explorer? Firefox and Chrome. Firefox and Chrome, but not Internet Explorer? Are you sure? Good girl. You told me that a day ago. Just <laughs> <laughs> <was> prepping you. <laughs> she says to me, what, why do they have Internet Explorer and Firefox and Chrome, but we're not allowed to use Internet Explorer? Oops. So. No, we didn't. It was something like that. No, I said, why is Internet Explorer? Bad. Why is it bad? Someone told you it was bad? No, you did. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> She's been listening, folks. All right, sweetheart. But I want to do a Tally Talks too. Well, we can't really do a Tally Talks tech when you haven't prepared anything. But you can tell... But I know what to talk about right now. Quick, favorite tux game? Um, Super Tux Cart. Super Tux Cart. The new release with all the tracks? Remember since we hacked it on the show? Yeah. Okay. Great. Anything else that you want to say to the world? I want to play Plant Calypso. Okay, well, we're a little busy right now. A little busy. <laughs> but there's a computer right there. Oh, okay. With a laptop. Sure. And a um, keyboard. No, it doesn't work. It's broken. Yeah. It's broken. No, it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> then I, I used it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, well, maybe it broke it since then. We had a power heat. Yeah. Okay, they love you, kiddo. <laughs> Give me a kiss and head up to bed. <laughs> Can I just do it for 10 more hours? No. <laughs> I love you. You fucked me. I know. <laughs> love you. See ya. Happy birthday. Happy knife. birthday. The whole right world there. says happy birthday. Yeah, lots There's of happy birthdays right in the there. chat room. There's a knife right there. It's also shaped like the Starship Enterprise. It's for cutting pizzas. So it's okay. Yeah, but you've never cut pizza with it. That's Night, kiddo. That's my girl. It's like a generational show now. She started off as a little wee baby, and here she is, and she's going to one day be co-hosting the show or doing the Tally Talks tech thing. She's hoping to do something like that. So, so it's sweet. pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Before we get into our feature, just a reminder, make sure you check out our mobile website. I've been working on some of the features. Amazon.cat5.tv. You can scan that QR code or just visit it on your smartphone, your tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, I am just about to release into beta version 4. Very, very excited about it. A couple of you already have beta access, but you're going to see over the next couple of weeks, so maybe if you're watching this after the fact, you'll see that uh, we are opening up a beta and you can actually click to launch the beta version of the mobile uh, site version 4. What's exciting about the mobile site version 4 is that it has all seven seasons of Category 5 TV on demand, cool. so you can ca catch those on your mobile device. Uh, it's fast loading because it uh, it doesn't preload things. Everything is loaded as you need it, and uh, so it's going to be really, really super cool. Plus, it's got live video, live audio, all the stuff that you would expect from our mobile site. Cool. Cool. All right. So I think that brings us right to uh, we can start talking about this thing. Yeah, a lot to talk is about. Cool. Have you ever? Uh, I mean, here's a scenario. I, I, my best example is going to the cottage always the case i get there and i realize i really need this tool and i don't have it because i'm at the cottage i didn't bring my toolkit right screwdriver pliers wire snips that kind of stuff what's the one mm -hmm. thing besides our keys that we're all going to have with us our phones our phones folks so if you've got an iphone version 5 or 5s 
this is for you. This is called the Task One G3 Multi Tool iPhone Aww. case. It's like all in one. It's not only a protective case for your iPhone, but it has 22 uh, quality tools built into it. So I, I kind of want to unbox this. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you want. So I asked. I asked earlier how heavy this was, and it's actually really light. Very so light, I'm really curious to see what all these little utensils are made out of. You thinking that they're paper? I'm thinking maybe like aluminum foil. Like maybe you, you <laughs> that like would be really good. You tap it on the desk and maybe it breaks. So I'm really anxious to see how awesome this is. And there's a couple of things about the Task One G3 uh, along those lines. Not only is it really really light, so it doesn't add a lot of mm-hmm. weight. Like we're talking under a hundred grams here. Uh, it's also really really thin, five millimeters. So it, it doesn't add to the footprint of your phone by any right. substantial means either. So rip into this thing. Let's take a oh, look. Oh, I get the. Yeah, why not? Of course, your phone battery dies and all of, you know, the phone is useless. But with this, the tools are obviously non-battery powered. They're still going to work. And there you go. Okay, so I see a couple of different things here. Yeah, reach right for the blade. (laughs) Just put your finger right into the spot that says don't put your finger here. I said I was tired. Okay. All right. This is probably a bad This is available from thetasklab.com. And they are available for pre-order right now. Now, that oh, looks like a cool. dangerous Klingon weapon. I see. And then it has all of the little utilities in the back. All right. Yeah, you can kind of see that. All right. Here, let's I'll let's take a look. Okay, to play can, around can with. Take a look. So, yeah, the blade does feel nice and solid. Definitely sharp. Cuts paper. Oh, cuts paper. Okay. But so, seriously. Okay, so let's so get this. So far, let's get way this stronger first. than I thought it would be. Yeah. It's so paper light. Paper doesn't cut paper. Have you ever played that game? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I've just peeled this thing off the back, which kind of has a bit of a diagram to show me what everything is. So let's just start playing. Okay, All so right. the knife is very conveniently a kind of like a switchblade style mm-hmm. knife. So it retracts. Nicely concealed from your iPhone. Now, point in case, of course... You need to be able to take your phone on an airplane. This is not something that you, you would be have on an to take it off. Yeah, and maybe check it. Would you take off the case though, and then lose all your other tools? Now, apparently, they're detachable. It, it is actually detachable. The blade. Oh. Now, we've never opened this before, so we don't know all about this. We're kind of learning this together with yeah. you. Yeah. But the blade itself is, in fact, easily detachable, even though it feels really, really solid on there. It seems as though I can push it in, and it almost wants to eject. Well, you know it can't come out too easily or you'd have knife yes. issues. So there, it is detachable so that if you want to take this on a plane, you can remove the knife attachment so that they won't stop you from bringing it on a plane. That's great. Smart thinking, right? Also has a bottle opener. That's cool. That's a must. Well, certainly if you're, it, it also has a, uh, the ability to stand up because it's got the, uh, uh, what do you call that, the thing at the back? A little kickstand or kick something. Kickstand. Yes, yeah. that's the word I was looking for. So you can kickstand it. And then watch category five, mm-hmm. w- for which you're going to also need that. Where is so it? To have, have a little axe need in it for bottle cutting down trees? Seems it, like there should be a little axe in there. It has a saw. Now, this is the flathead screwdriver, which is uh-huh. removable. It has a saw for cutting. That's a surrogated blade. Cool. All right. What else can we find here? It's so well hidden. Like, look at this. It's the size of an iPhone. Yeah. And the case actually is surprisingly thin. Like, it's yeah. not... Uh, much thicker than your normal iPhone case would be either, exactly. which is really surprising. I'm going to get this paper fake iPhone out of here. Oh, it even comes with instructions. Uh, and oh, and there's an, an Allen wrench oh, there. Oh, that's probably how we remove that's, it. That would be how to remove Smart. The, uh, the, the, fe- the feature, the dangerous parts. There we go. A little something that shot out the side there. It looks like something that goes into this little spot right here. Loads of cool stuff. That's kind of neat. What is that? On your iPhone. Oh. A pair of pliers, wire yeah. snips, and strippers all built into this little thing. So it's not going to um, block your headphone jack or anything like that, your camera. Everything is still accessible. Also, an interesting note, they were thinking about the antenna, the signal quality. When you've got something as robust as this on your iPhone, you don't want to lose signal strength right right so it's a a very strong polymer plastic that uh, covers the area where the antenna is so that the signal can still get through just fine so there's no problem with signal degradation or anything like that but you can feel it's strong you're not going to have any problem with it you know 
breaking Super light, though. as you're as you're working with it. But yeah, light. So cool. It's the same size as a See? normal iPhone case. Not very case. thick either. So it has a knife, which we saw, mm-hmm. a saw blade, which we also found, screwdrivers. Now it does have a Phillips screwdriver in there oh. somewhere, but how do you? F- we're gonna have to read the manual, aren't we? This is <laughs> there incredible. is everything. Yeah. There are switches all over the back of this thing. Can you show them the switches yeah. again, so you can get a good good look at this. There you go. So. Cool, huh? Yeah. There's an extra little piece in here too. I don't know what it so does. You find something that comes out. Number off. three. Well, this is kind of neat. So this outlines everything that, like, what's what phone case has this kind of blueprints, right? To oh. be able to find all the parts. <laughs> what did you just shoot out of there? It's awesome. So beyond that, um, if you are a biker, and by biker I mean like a bicycle, um, this is a perfect cool. tool. It has uh, multiple Allen wrenches, uh, multiple different sizes, specifically metric for biking. Um, also, it has a spoke wrench. And uh, like I say, um, you've got the bottle opener and everything else in there and a measuring cool. uh, tool on the side, too. So that's pretty cool. Want to know another cool thing? I always I'm, like cool I, things. I mentioned the. I can, here you go. <laughs> as, here you go. <laughs> good example. Good example because as she's dropping pieces out that she hasn't quite secured in, there, it's locked. Now it won't fall out. Uh-huh. I figured it so out. You have to lock it. You can unlock it. I wonder if that's, do you think that's a Phillips? I think it could probably I be both. I think it probably is. Like it's, that's how they've gotten around the fact that it needs to be flat. It makes sense. And it fits into the screwdriver spot. So it's like a flat mm-hmm. triangular kind of thing. And it goes into the side here so that you can keep it safe. That's cool. There's another thing up here that I don't really know all the parts. There we go. That goes in there. But along the lines of these ejectable pieces that you could possibly lose or the blade that you remove and take it out at the airport, maybe you forget to take it out and they make you take it off, right? Mm -hmm. Well, then you've got a problem because now you're stuck. You know, what if you've lost your blade? They'll actually replace the blade, the part. If you you drop something, they'll they'll replace it free of charge. That's awesome. Cool. Um, The edge of this is also made of that special plastic that I mentioned so again it's it's nice and solid you can feel the mm-hmm. quality of that it's going to protect your phone um, and the tools themselves are designed specifically so that as you're using your phone as a tool you don't have to worry about um, accidentally breaking your phone it's not going to do that and of course there's no hammer built into this oh. it's the only thing that's missing no hammer folks so you can't bash the screen of your iPhone <laughs> on the end of a nail sorry might be a bad idea yeah pretty cool that's from the tasklab.com that particular model is called the task one g3 multi-tool iphone case for the iphone 5 or 5s it's a long name but a very cool cool device i i I like that it's so concealed not that like i'm thinking about camping and stuff Mm mm-hmm that you know you always need to have something and you've got your phone with you anyways for emergencies you've got your your kind of swiss army knife of tools here being able to do i i said you can make a spear spear a fish crack a beer whittle a toothpick all with your phone cool huh the tasklab.com check them out they are available for pre-order these ones are about 100 bucks uh they do have other models that are starting around $30. $30. So check it out, thetasklab.com. Very cool. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We've got your viewer questions. We're going to start tackling those tonight. Uh, maybe we can fit one in just before the news tonight and sure. get this show on the road. Hey, everybody. Oh, let's see. All right, so here is a question. Let me just resize this. Oh, it looks like a long one. Oh, good. Um, from Kyoshi Ninja. Hey, Kyoshi Ninja. I think. Did I read that right? I so did. Okay. This is a follow-up to the previous question earlier this week regarding open ERP. Uh, I just saw a snippet of your demonst- demonstration on 
of Clock on Adobe Air, of course. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed your review of the software and thought that perhaps you might find Open ERP interesting as it has the ability to do the type of stuff you show on Clock. But further, you can manage details of projects, collaboration with various resources if you need to, and create invoices as well as track payments and generate financial reports, etc. Because it's open source and available for Linux, Mac, and Windows, it may be more attractive to viewers who may have an interest in such tools. That's um, cool. Episode 301. So we're talking 50 weeks ago, almost a year ago, uh, Rachel and I took a look at Clock. K-L-O-K. So go onto mm-hmm. our website, check out episode 301. It's a really cool time tracking software. Maybe you should check this out. It's a really neat way, and I still use it in, in business, mm-hmm. to track my projects. So it allows me to keep track of all of the work that I'm doing so that when it comes time to invoice, I don't lose any money based on my accident of not tracking the time. Right. I'm always on the clock when I'm working. I'm off the clock when I'm not. So uh, ERP, on the other hand, is more like full, robust, um, multiple people working through projects and things like that. And, uh, and then you've got this fully robust kind of business system. Now, that's not something that I've really looked at because... Are your allergies <laughs> acting up? I'm not allergies. I'm so tired that my eyes water when I look at the screen. <laughs> we can dim it. Aw. I'm not crying, folks. You want me to I dim swear. this for you? No, it's still going to okay. do it. It's fine. I'll it's just the sun I'll get lights. really emotional during the show. I was like, I'm talking about an ERP <laughs> here, Krista. Are you all right? It's okay. All right. Should we take just, a moment? I just, just love it so much. ERP. I love it. I... I Open ERP. Let's take a look. Let's pull it up. I'll, I'll give you a moment there. To <laughs> gather your, your senses. Gather myself. Yeah. Okay. Open ERP. Let's do a quick search here. Formerly Open ERP. Okay. So they've changed it to Odoo. There you go. Let's check it out. So this is more of a robust kind of full project management solution full even as far as you know it integrates the crm to be able to keep track and of your conversations with customers and things it, this is basically going to take care of a lot of your business needs now when we look at clock we're strictly looking at being able to track the time for a single project it's nice and easy this is a much more robust much more complicated uh process to get something like uh, open erp or Odoo, I suppose it's now called. But you can check that out. Of course, there are commercial versions available, but as an open project, uh, I would expect that they still have, there you go, a free for two users, um, I guess. So, I don't know. Check them out. It's odoo.com. There you go. Cool. Got yourself all together. Ready to do the news? Yeah, I think we can maybe do the news. There's no sad news tonight. You promise? I hope so. Okay. I don't don't make that (laughs) promise because I don't remember what's sad. I will judge what's sad. Okay. All right. You look at her eyes and you'll know if it's (laughs) sad. Red and watery. Have you been working like crazy or what? Yeah. It's just nonstop, uh, eh? Yeah. I didn't get to bed till 4.30 last night. 4.30 last night? Yeah. Well, this morning. Um, It would be this morning, I guess. 4, 4.30 in the morning. Yeah, and then I, so I got up at 8, so I'm tired. Oh, <laughs> deadline time or what? Yes, everything's just crazy. It's one after another, and, mm. you know, everything's so dire that nothing can be bumped today. Sure. <laughs> you know how it is. Sorry, Kristen. Yeah. No, we got to do the show at 7. Yeah, this guy, he won't even do it tomorrow. I said, can we do the show tomorrow? There's people relying on us. He says, it's got to be Tuesday. It's got to be Tuesday. This guy. It's he called turns, consistency. Turns Italian all of a sudden. Is that Italian? I don't know. Kind of Jewish Italian? Was it? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, take we'll it just, away. We'll just call it Canadian. All, all right. right. Canadian. <laughs> all right, so here are the top stories in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Dell is to offer Ubuntu 2 on its latest batch of 2-in-1 Inspiron laptops, marking the first time the OS has been sold on a mainstream hybrid device. The 11-inch Dell Inspiron 11 3000 and 13-inch 7000 notebooks were unveiled at Computex last Monday. Both models feature a rotating display that can be folded backwards to form tablet, easel, tent, and laptop modes. Cool. Similar to Lenovo's Yoga, uh, yoga line of Windows 8 and Chrome OS devices. 
Although Dell offers the devices with Windows 8.1 by default, customers can opt to replace it with Ubuntu 14.04 LTS desktop. Dell says the Ubuntu option will be available worldwide starting in September. Nice. I love the idea. I love the concept. Mm -hmm. I know HP for years before tablets came out had the the reversible screen that you could lay flat and it was good with the stylus and, you know, you could do presentations that way. Um, So to see them, you know, now Dell taking it one step further and making it even more robust. I do see a stylus still in the image, so I'm curious Mm -hmm. because i don't know the specs of this particular unit i wasn't i wasn't paying that much attention to the to the news but i'm curious if they have multi-touch in these devices but cool that they're bringing ubuntu to a consumer product that's very cool apple killer hey i still like a keyboard and and screen for, for your main work, but I mean, yes. when you're heading out somewhere and you really want the usability of a laptop, but you don't want to drag your laptop with you or well, your see, desktop. But then this kind of system makes more sense to me than a, an iPad, for mm-hmm. example. Well, it has more functionality. It's a, a computer yeah. versus a, a, a stripped down device that... You know, you don't have any CD. Well, who cares about CD? USB. <laughs> USB, right? So CDs. It's really about the, the USB and the keyboard, the tactile keyboard. That's what I like. Yeah. Cool. Tennessee Frank is wondering in the chat room if you would get your license fee back for the Windows 8 license. And I think what's actually mm. happening is they're offering Ubuntu as an alternative OS. So you would pay less because Ubuntu is free. Right. right? So, yeah, you would pay less for the Ubuntu version of these devices. That's pretty cool. Cool. Google has released the alpha version of source code for end-to-end, a Chrome browser extension that encrypts email. End-to-end uses the open PGP standard to encrypt, decrypt, digitally sign, and verify sign messages within the browser. We're just sharing the code today so that the community can test and evaluate it, helping us make sure that it's as as secure as it needs to be before people start relying on it, Google said. It will offer a bounty for bugs found under its vulnerability reward program. Hmm. And to end encrypts only the body of Gmail messages, the email subject line and the list of recipients remain unencrypted, as is the norm for messages encrypted with OpenPGP. There are currently no plans to implement end-to-end on mobile devices because Chrome on mobile devices doesn't support extensions. Interesting. I, I love the idea of encrypted email because some people don't realize how unsecure email is. Yes. It's like if I, if I wrote a very private thing on a piece of paper right now and handed it to Krista like this and you could read it, that's how secure email is. Because when you send an email, it goes through... Mm-hmm. hundreds, possibly thousands of computers before it ever arrives at the recipient. It's it's instantaneous now. Uh, those of us who are around back in the BBSing days and FidoNet, we know how email works, you know, from goes from one system to the next, to the next, to the next, right. because back then we had to wait for it because it would send and then it would dial out to the next server and send and then dial out to the next server and send. Now it's instant, but it still is doing it that way. So it goes through all these servers, and any one of those servers or the guy sitting across from you drinking a latte at the coffee shop could be reading those emails. So when Gmail mentions, okay, we're going to add encryption through a browser, (laughs) pardon me, a browser plugin, that's cool. It's only going to work for Gmail, though. But maybe with them opening it up, it's going to allow other developers to say, oh, let's integrate this into Mm -hmm. Thunderbird. I think it's only a matter of time till that happens. It would have to be so widely adopted Mm -hmm. And, and even, you know, if, if you're on Gmail and I send an email to somebody who's not on Gmail, they can't receive the encrypted message, so I would have to mm-hmm. send it unencrypted to them. So it would have to be so, like, almost a standard. Like, they would have to say either it's encrypted or we don't allow it. Mm-hmm. That's what it has to come down to in order for email to become secure. But I think this maybe is the first step. And if anyone can do it, it'll be Google. Uh, Tennessee Frank actually says right now in the chat room, I've been using uh, hash mail out of Canada for years and I can encrypt it uh, end to end. Then the person who gets the mail uh, needs the password to unencrypt it. So they have to have that plug in as well, mm-hmm. I would assume. He says it's cool and it's free. I've seen 
features like that. I mean, Zimbra has encryption options and there are Outlook plugins to do it. But the problem always mm-hmm. is, is it's not a standard. So the person on the receiving end has to have the exact same plugin installed. Right. Otherwise, they don't. It's just gibberish. And so, you know, because it's not standard, you just can't rely on it. Because if I sent Krista an email and she received it and it was just gibberish, what's she going to do? I got that Robbie. What? The late. What is he doing? Thinking that it's spam or just some crazy thing, right? So, oh, see what happens. Hmm. Go, 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 (laughs) go. What's this? An orange? Hmm. Scribble is a pen that can scan the color of any object and immediately begin drawing in that color. The pen features two ends, one with a nib and one with a scanner. The users can press the scanner against any surface to capture its color, which is translated into a six-character hex code that stores its RGB value. The pen also features five refillable cartridges that are made up of cyan, yellow, magenta, black, and white inks. When an object is scanned, the pen mixes the right amount of each ink to replicate its color and enable users to immediately draw with it. Alternatively, the pen can be connected to a device via Bluetooth or micro USB, and the color can be used for digital work, while a stylus Mm. version of the device is also available for drawing tablets and touchscreens. Cool. Scribble's sensor can detect up to 16 million colors and up to 100,000 scan colors can be stored on the pen at any one time. The pen is set to retail at $149.95 and the stylus at $79.95 US, with the team preparing a Kickstarter campaign in the near future. That's a really cool idea. As a designer, um, I know I get a lot of clients that go, I want this shade of green. Sure. And I mean, there's so many shades. I'd like you, my you website just, to be this color. You just try to like mix it to be so close. But if you had an actual sample right. and could do this. And then you use something like a, an online color swatching tool mm-hmm. to take that color and build a color scheme mm-hmm. based on that, right? That's pretty cool. There are a lot of uses for something like that. Not just for an artist, but I think specifically for web developers. I'm constantly running up against you know, somebody trying to describe a, a color. color or something. It's <laughs> relatively easy to do off, like online, mm-hmm. but very difficult to do on, uh, offline. Mm-hmm. Online, I can find a Google image or something and say, okay, yeah, I like that color. Yeah, and I can use pick. a Doppler tool to pick that color out using GIMP or whatever or Photoshop. But this takes that to the next level and says, okay, let's put that tool in your Mm -hmm. hand that we've been using digitally for all this time, selecting the color by just clicking. Now we can do it with any object. That's really super cool. Beautiful blue sky. Got it. Add it to my 100,000 colors. Very neat. Yeah, you can get like Robbie's skin tone down pat to scan. Just like that. (laughs) It's getting a little red. I sit in in a... glass kind of enclosure and type all day and we used in your a, car no this is this is it the office and, glass and enclosure and we used one of those laser thermometers the other day and it was like 40 degrees in my little cubicle in the sun so you're like in a little a little sauna basically yeah yeah exactly that's yeah. nice the windows are all fogged that's healthy for you got lots of plants you're sweating out all those toxins that's every it. day all day yeah Except when a customer Drinking comes in. I'm 10 like, gallons oh. of water. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Cool. Well, Japanese firm SoftBank has unveiled a robot called Pepper, which it says can read human emotions. It uses right. an emotional engine and a cloud-based artificial intelligence system that allows it to analyze gestures, expressions, and voice tones. The firm said people could communicate with it just like they would with friends and family, and it could perform various tasks. It will go on sale to the public next year for 198,000 yen, which is just under $2,000 in the United States. Really? Yeah. Is that all it would cost? Look at that little guy. He's cute. Just adorable. What's next? You can buy your own friends, folks. No need to go (laughs) to make them. You can buy them for under $2,000. It seems like they've got some kind of a tablet on the chest there. I wonder if it's if it's almost an attachment for a Maybe. tablet. Maybe. It doesn't make much sense that they would just plunk one on build there. Build a tablet into the robot's chest. Maybe he can stand there and you can watch TV. I would think so. Definitely. Pepper Read my watch. emotions while I watch something like a drama. Yeah. Are yeah. you sad? Shoot him up. And it gives you a Kleenex yeah. when you tear up cuz of the show. 
I guess nice. I, I have yet to see this thing in operation. It looks very um, mobile from the way that the joints and mm -hmm. I don't know if you can really get a good glimpse of that. Let's see here. Oh, it looks like you can there you trot around. It certainly looks like you've got the, the agility of, you know, a humanoid robot or an android. Not too sure about the whole emotion thing because, I mean, anything that a, a robot can do is just going to be artificial. Um, but that said, interesting note that just on Sunday it was announced that, I believe it was Sunday, that for the first time in all of history, artificial intelligence had actually passed the Turing test. So we're very, very close to that threshold where AI becomes um, so realistic that we can't really tell the difference. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with the Turing test, basically um, think of artificial intelligence being quizzed by a panel of experts. Mm -hmm. And those experts being absolutely convinced that they're talking to a real person. That's bizarre. That's what has occurred just in the past week. So artificial intelligence now has gotten to that point. Of course, this is just one unique case. I don't know all the details, but that it's happened is a really big deal mm -hmm. as far as robotics and artificial intelligence go. So we'll see what happens. Interesting to see these guys all of a sudden pop up and say, okay, we've got a robot coming out. It's only going to be $2,000. Yeah, it's bizarre that like I, two thousand dollars is a lot of money, but right? for something like this, you think they'd post it like twenty thousand and make it something. Yeah, it just doesn't even seem <laughs> right. How can that even be possible? Is it? Does it contain a chip that monitors our every move and uploads it to the NSA? It's crazy. What's that movie with Will Smith where he has like, like know. iRobot? Yeah, that one. That's what we're becoming. I hope not, because they all <laughs> killed... Yeah, I well, just, they might not be evil and vindictive. Right. I hope not. I just did a quick Google search for... I put 148,000 yeah. yen, and that came out to be 1,445 US dollars. Yeah, it's so 198,000 yen. 198,000 yen? So which is about, or under $2,000. So 1,000? Yeah. So that's not a typo. $66. That's under. legit. That's a really cheap robot who can read my emotions and respond and do tasks around the house. I'd be like, you don't Peppa, even make me a need sandwich. a tablet, that tablet uh, by Dell anymore, the computer. Right. Yeah. Just, just get, get one the of robot. these. It's probably Fold not up. not that much more. I mean, like, I guess we'll see more information about Pepper coming up over the next little while. You don't have to carry it with you. You just Pepper follow. Yeah. Come get in the car. Kind of neat. I could use a friend to talk to. Kind of sad that it's coming to that. But you see people <laughs> sitting with their families at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's all it is, is phones now. <gasps> I see ladies pushing their babies in the stroller. And texting and, and not watching. And a standing next to them walking. And they're going... And it's just like, Veering come on, traffic. people. Yeah. So we think it's absurd that... People are going to befriend a robot. Well, hello. Sure, it's real people on the other end of a cell phone, but really, we're already there as far as being antisocial in, in nature. So hopefully that will come about. It's true. I'm not even actually in the studio right now. I'm a hologram. How cool is that? My hand went right through her face. <laughs> Well, if you guys are interested, you can get the full stories at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by uh, Tennessee Frank and our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, you can email us at newsroom at category5.tv from the category5.tv newsroom. I'm Krista Wells. Thanks, Krista. <clears throat> this is Category 5 Technology TV. Sorry, I just need a drink. Water break. Water break. All right, Category 5 Technology TV tonight is brought to you in part by Belltone. Learn why Belltone is the choice of millions when it comes to fantastic hearing care. Check out Belltone first, a revolutionary made-for-iPhone hearing aid. Visit belltone.com, or you can also get a free trial by calling 1-800-BELLTONE now. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. So nice to see you. Yeah, I'm Crystal Wells. We have a ton of your questions that are coming in. Also, I see Talky Toaster has messaged me in the chat room saying, question, uh, is there a recommended DNS service provider? I used to use Granite Canyon. 
and another called public-dns.net out of Tallahassee, Florida, but they are both gone now. Talkie Toaster, are you talking for dynamic DNS? Because when I reconnect my internet connection, I get a new IP address. Right. Right? So um, I, for the longest time, because they have just been old reliable, have gone through changeip.com. Now, is that an official response? Probably not. But they, they're, they like I say, old, re- reliable. They've been around forever. They've got free dynamic DNS services, and they've got all these domains to, check for, uh, to choose from. So if your IP address changes, you can set up your modem, your router, mm-hmm. pardon me, to automatically update your IP on a, on a DNS server hosted by them. It's just worked since I think I've started using them in about 1999. Um, that's how long I've been using uh, changeip.com. As far as uh, other services that are out there, there are a ton, right? Like DinDNS is a good one. Um, there are just a, a lot of great uh, companies. I, I think, though, that you want to find one that's going to be, uh, that's been around for long enough that you know that they're sticking around. And look at their commercial products as well and see if there's something that, that, uh, that you like. But changeip.com is the one that I've used forever. Thanks for the question. Cool. And here's a question from Tool916. Uh, Wait, Talkie Toaster still in the chat room says, Yes! It's exactly what I was looking for! If only we got that reaction from every question. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that was yeah. the reaction. What a guy. Okay. Can we get a question out over sorry. here? Sorry. All right. Question from Tool916. Hey, uh, He says, uh, <laughs> A great media mogul of the Maple Leaf Leader of Men. Influencer of women, and now? all around nice guy. All right, I guess I'll take that. <laughs> I've just done a great thing. I took a leap of faith by installing Ubuntu fourteen point oh four. Nice. Um, and my Dell Inspiron laptop now roars with interconductive power and resources far beyond the power <laughs> of mo- <laughs> mortal micro sorry powered machines. It's a tongue twister for anyone. You're going to make me cry again. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, no, we're there now. All right. uh, why can't I get the terminal to recognize my password? I need to explore brave new worlds and travel where other mortals have failed to enter. And now I'm being hindered. Hindered, I imagine. Um, help, great hairless one. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> All seriousness aside, I really enjoy and look forward to each and every episode, even if most of what you discuss is a little about my learning curve. Windows has been driving me to the point of going nuts with problems, and Macs are cool, but expensive and so proprietary. Uh, Linux Ubuntu may be my niche. Uh, keep up the great work. You guys are great as God save the queen, y'all. Wow. You remember the question that was in the middle of that, right? There was a question? Yeah, something about... Uh, why can't oh, I get one? the terminal oh. to re- recognize my password? Oh, here's them. Why are you here? Why can't you, the terminal recognize your password? Yeah. So all, the, all those wonderful words <laughs> and no description of the problem. What do you mean it won't take your password? Are you trying to do a su- super user like SU? What's going on? What's the problem here? What do you mean your password? If There's got to be more your, in there. There are a lot of words. If it's not taking your password, you've, you've typed it wrong. Did you try turning it off and on again? Uh, what else can I? I'll bet you that turning it off and on again is going to fix it, though. I want more emails from him. I love the descriptors. I love it. We don't know how to help you. uh, (laughs) (laughs) We have no idea. Yeah. Um, So good luck with that. Thanks for the email, Doodle nine sixteen. Love having you as a part of the community. And uh, if you write a book, let me know because I will buy it. Yes. And it'll get to the point in chapter 50. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 49 so chapters of descriptors. the point of the story is. <laughs> <laughs> Might be about Robbie. Who knows? Mm. Uh, here's a question or comment. I'm not sure yet from Kevin. <laughs> We're not into it yet. Right. It's going to be a surprise. Okay. Uh, we are now live streaming network called YLN. Oh, a new live streaming network called YLN.TV. I recently awesome. saw one of your YouTube videos on your Category 5 TV studio, Wirecast Productions. Uh, we recently set up a green screen studio with 1080p JVC camcorder. The studio host is mic'd with a wireless uh, lav, LAV. Uh, and the yes, output... Yes, a lavalier mic. Okay. That's the like clip-on that goes on your ah, tie clip. okay. Yeah. 
And the output of the camcorder is HDMI into a capture card into the studio workstation. Our first production is just two shots. One is green screen, screen screen of the host over a virtual studio background, and the other is a Skype input with a guest. Okay. I have audio for the host, but with a delay. I'm unable to get audio for the Skype source for the guest. I have read the online help docs and can't resolve the problems. Would you possibly be able oh, for a phone call? Um, or mm. do you know anything that can maybe help them out right now? I will certainly try. This comes to us from Kevin. Uh, okay, so backing up to the kind of the description here, we've got a JVC 1080p camera. Yes. You've got a microphone clipped mm-hmm. on. Uh, you've got HDMI going from the camera to the capture card yes. in the server, the broadcasting system. Um, and you've also got a green screen shot. Oh, no, this, this one's a green screen shot. Yes. With a virtual studio background. And the other shot it's is Skype. Skype coming in. Okay, so my main shot, I've got a lapel mic, I've got a camera, I've got a green screen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so a couple things here. First thing I would check is what is your CPU usage? Because when you're doing chroma key, you've got to have a really, really powerful system, especially if you're working with the 1080p source that you've got on that JVC camera. So if your system is running at 80, 90 percent, you're going to start having problems with frame drops and and synchronization issues with the recording or the broadcast because it just can't keep up. Mm -hmm. It's just too too much stuff to be doing all at once. Um, Beyond that, if your microphone, you didn't mention, but if your microphone is connected into the camera, for example, and then the camera source is going out to the computer. Keep in mind that the camera is generally meant for recording, not live streaming. Um, So you're better to pull the video source off the camera and the audio source off the soundboard uh, or off of like a audio input on your computer and then mix those together. I find you get a lot less lag and problems with audio synchronization issues in that case. so give that a try if you're not already doing that. If you're going in through the camera, you may have some trouble. Um, un- being unable to get audio from Skype, of course, Wirecast, if you're using Wirecast from cat5.tv slash Wirecast, you've got to have a full version of the software, not the free version. Um, has um, Desktop Presenter. Desktop Presenter allows you to pull in Skype with audio from that computer. But that's not ideal because, again, that's coming in through the network. You may have some issues if the network is bogged down. and uh, But I wouldn't say issues more. You may encounter some lag here and there um, because it's live video, live talking back and forth. We want to eliminate all latency as best as we can. So that's where, again, having an interim mixer so, you know, like a, an audio mixer, an analog mixer is practically zero latency. There's no, there's no delay on those things. They're great. So you pull the audio output from the, the Skype computer and you go through the mixer. You pull the audio off your microphone and you go into the mixer. And then that mixer then mixes down and goes out to, uh, you know, hopefully if you're lucky, you've got a bit more of a chain like a compressor and an exciter uh, along the lines. But essentially it needs to go out from the mixer into the computer that the camera is also plugged into. Mix it down. Okay. Um, I can show you how we do it. Here's Wirecast on our system. And let's blow it up here. So if I bring up, say, Krista's shot, smile for the camera, you'll see that I have, there's our camera. Okay. So that is coming in from the camera itself. Then we have two line inputs. One of them Mm -hmm. is our, uh, this one is the sound cart system. This is our actual microphones coming in off the board. And then of course we've got our, like the lower third. So for us, it's really this this audio system here combined with this camera system. And you'll notice that our camera, we've muted it because we don't want any audio coming in off the camera. We want it all coming in off the board. That's key. So it's as simple as that. So. Hopefully that helps cool. you to, to find your way around. Um, that's Telestream Wirecast from cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And uh, I, like I say, I would check on your CPU usage, and you may need a more powerful system to do the chroma key aspect of things. Uh, we found when we did some chroma key work uh, that, yeah, we sometimes got a little bit of latency, and we had to realign the audio to the video in post. Uh, and that's strictly because we were just putting so much stuff through the CPU. Uh, that it was just bogging it right down. So thanks for a great question. I hope that that was Mm -hmm. a great answer. 
Good luck. Let us know, okay? There's a question here from Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Love your movies. <laughs> Thanks for watching our show. It says, which would provide a safer web browsing environment, browsing from Linux, which is running within a virtual box on top of Windows, or vice versa? Is this a chicken and the egg scenario? This sounds, this is an interesting question. Which would provide a safer web browsing environment? So here are the two options. You've got Linux running in a virtual machine on Windows, or Windows running in a virtual machine on Linux. Yes. Which would be safer? I would say, because of the fact that my virtual machine can be snapshotted, I would put Windows as the virtual machine so that I can create a snapshot because Linux is not susceptible to the viruses and the, the, the uh, exploits that are going to happen through a port scan and somebody finding mm -hmm. an open port and breaking into your system as much as Windows anyways. Um, so if I were to take the approach, so here's scenario one, we take Linux virtualized on Windows. So then Windows gets attacked and all our systems are affected. Our Windows system is the host and is destroyed and the Linux guest is also inaccessible because the host is gone. Flip it and reverse it, we've got Linux as the host which is not susceptible to these kinds of attacks. We've got a Windows virtual machine. We have snapshotted it which is basically to take a snapshot in time. Uh, here's the scenario. Then that Windows machine gets destroyed, gets a virus, gets whatever and it's okay. You just revert back to the snapshot in the virtual machine. You've never lost your host. You've never had to, uh, you've never lost anything as far as functionality on your computer goes. Revert the snapshot, um, which is going to take that Windows guest and put it back to, basically take it back in time to the day that you created the snapshot. So keep in mind, if you've created any documents or files or settings in that Windows guest, you're going to lose them because it's going to revert back. But you're also going to be completely putting the system back to normal. You can boot it up and the virus is gone. Like that. As if it never happened. So I would say Windows as a guest in Linux. Did I pass? Sounds was there a, a... Okay. It's a lot of words. Mm. A lot of pretty words. Okay. This is a question from Rick Harrison. Hi, Rick. Uh, now that TrueCrypt is no longer being supported, do you have a recommendation for container encrypting mm. software? I prefer not to use BitLocker as I don't trust Microsoft. Yes. BitLocker, of course, being a part of mm -hmm. Microsoft Windows. Well, are you going to trust it, really? But also, it's it's closed source. Mm -hmm. It's it's not being... Um, What's the word I'm thinking? Evaluated by a third party. It has not been... Um, oh, what is it when you don't pay your taxes? Why have I lost the word? When you don't pay your taxes? Um, they, they come... Audit. Audited. Audited. The, the software hasn't <laughs> been audited. So this is how I think, folks. Because there's so much jumbled information up here. I have Must to, pay okay, taxes. taxes. Didn't pay taxes. Going to be audited. Going to be audited. Software. Audit. Not audited. That software has not been audited by a third party. That's the way my mind works. That's how we get answers. Um, so, thank you, John. <laughs> so, that said, of course, okay, we need to find an alternative. I can't believe the TrueCrypt. Here's the thing. Here's what it boils down to. TrueCrypt is gone. Mm -hmm. All the companies, all the people who have relied on TrueCrypt all these years, and then TrueCrypt goes in for an audit, and suddenly, without warning, they take it offline, and they put up a post that says, don't use TrueCrypt, it's not safe. Okay, Good. that's that's all we know. We don't know the results of the audit yet. The audit is not complete. All we know is that the developers themselves have taken it down and said, don't use it, it's not safe. Okay, so now what? We've got all these companies that are relying on TrueCrypt. What other options are there? Okay, first of all, if you need cross-platform, here's one for you. I'm going to just bring up my browser and start getting around here. EndpointProtector.com. We've talked about EndpointProtector.ca, and of course, uh, if you're looking for sales in Canada or the United States, contact me directly. I'll help you out. So they have a program called EasyLock. There it is. 
found it down at the bottom. This is cross-platform. That's Windows, Linux, or Mac. And this is going to give you uh, encryption on your USB devices. Okay, so this is not full disk encryption for your hard drive. This is this is strictly, I believe, your USB and cloud services and things like that. Um, and you can get a free copy for personal use, at least a trial. I'm not sure. It is a commercial application. You can go through and check that one out. Okay, so that's option number one, 25 bucks. Okay, option number two, I would say, is probably a pretty good option if you're on Windows. It's called Deslock. Deslock Plus, and it also has a version, this is full disk encryption, so this is more the robust kind of replacement for TrueCrypt, okay? So this does support um, creating containers, this supports full disk encryption, it is a commercial tool, but this also has a free personal edition. This one, however, is only Windows. So what happens for Linux? Oh, and that is deslock.com, by the way. D-E-S-L-O-C-K.com, and there's a free personal version there, and uh, it is backed by ESET, uh, the Technology Alliance, and so it's, you know, we know it's a trusted software, it's good software, uh, and it works really, really well. For Linux, unfortunately, you know, there, you know, there aren't that type, there's not that type of a solution, however, a lot of the current versions of Linux do come with uh, built-in Linux unified key setup, which is full disk encryption that during installation, you're going to be asked if you can encrypt, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to encrypt the hard drive. So you've seen that before. Uh, generally speaking, um, most of the modern Linux distros are going to offer you that during the uh, installation process. So good luck. Try uh, any one of those, whichever one suits your needs, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find something that works really well for you. Great. Answer the question. And oh, see what you're saying. I can't believe TrueCrypt is gone. Crazy. Next week, we are actually going to be taking a look at this Belltone First smart headset. Cool. The hearing aid. This is the most incredible mm. hearing aid I've ever seen in my life. This thing is its groundbreaking, revolutionary, incredible. If you have any kind of problems with your hearing, you've got to check out next week's episode. Hillary Rumble is going to be here. You know that she, uh, is, uh, she, she does sign language for schools. She is very actively involved with the deaf community. And we're going to be talking with uh, one, of the, uh, one of the gentlemen from uh, Belltone Canada and also showing you the device so that you can see. Uh, we're going to take a look right here on the show and see what this thing actually can do. Uh, and we'll also be able to field your questions. So if you have any questions about the security of Belltone first or anything at all, make sure you get those into us this week. And uh, that is live at category5.tv. Great. That'll be exciting. I yeah. know. That went so fast. Yeah. It was that one email that had all those descriptors. That, I know. You know. I know. Pumped up Robbie here. Yeah. Old bald smart one. I think it's that O'Hareless one. I think you just added the smart oh, okay. in there. Well, there was something about smart in there. <laughs> Maybe. Something about it. I'll say. Hmm. Nice having you here. Yeah, it's great to be here, folks. Nice to see you, too. Get onto our website this week, category5.tv. Join the community if you haven't done so already. You can register right there, category5.tv. All the time you got. Absolutely. Till next time. Till next week. Good night. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. 